Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhaus here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If you want to ask us a question or if you have a real estate need, give us a call, 267-988-2000. You're probably wondering, who is addicted to real estate? We're full-time real estate investors and realtors. Okay, we buy houses. If you've got one that you're looking to sell, give us a call. If you're a realtor and you would like to hang your license at our agencies, we have three of them. One in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. We are also involved in investor and real estate agent education meetings every month. Our next meeting is coming up March 16th. And that is going to be at the Mike's York Street Pub and Grill at the corner of York and Street Road in Warminster, PA. You can check us out at addictedtorealestate.com. Put your name and email address in at addictedtorealestate.com, and you will get sent invitations to all of our meetings and come out and hang with us personally and learn more about the real estate investing business. So how are you guys doing today? I'm doing great, man. I got my new truck. I'm so excited. Yeah, you got a cool looking truck. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna post a, a picture of your truck um, up on the video this week Very on cool. YouTube. On YouTube, you can check out our YouTube channel, Addicted to Real Estate TV. You know, we've seen so so many people I talk to have seen our trucks. You know, they say, "Oh, I've seen your trucks everywhere." You know, and it's funny, you know, you know, and and you know, they and they're always saying, you know, they're saying, "You guys must be really doing well if you've got those trucks." And the reality is, are we really doing well, Jeremy? Yeah, I love it, Al. Yeah, they say, oh, wow, you got another office now? Like, yeah, congratulations, some more expenses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I tell you what, we, we, I went from having this uh, sporty Volvo that um, had eight, $800 shocks and um, went from a car that cost me money. I remember getting the bills, like $800 a shock plus labor. Like, you know what, forget this. Let me trade this thing in, get a truck, or get it wrapped. Go from a car that cost me money to one that makes me money. Sure. And the first deal, I think we made twenty five grand off of the one down in uh, – Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know the the funny thing about getting your truck wrapped, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about, we have black trucks that mm-hmm. say "I buy houses on them" with big red letters, so big you can see them from space. And uh, if you don't <laughs> believe true. me, if you don't believe me, go to Google Earth. You'll find, <laughs> check out our addresses, and you'll see some. And uh, why do we do that? Okay, we wrap our vehicles, and you're probably wondering, does the cost of the wrap pay for itself. I said, not only does the cost of the wrap pay for itself, it pays for the whole damn car. That's true. That's you got, true. You got to drive something, right? So, I, yeah. and we're actually getting Phil's car wrapped. He's got this little roller skate. We're gonna get that wrapped, and that'll be that'll be nice too. Okay. So. so, Jeremy, what are we gonna be talking about today? So, we have uh, questions this week. You can email your questions in. You can send them to Phil at Addicted to Real Estate or Questions at Addicted to Real Estate dot com. And uh, one of the questions: Do you guys invoice your tenants every month? That's a good question. I know the answer to that, but I'll, uh, I'll let Phil answer. Yeah, um, great question. Why are we investing in Florida? So always love that topic. Absolutely love Florida, especially when it's cold outside. And um, we were we need you guys to email in some more questions because this last question actually came from Phil. He handed me this question today, and I'm curious to see the answer. <laughs> why is it that you never see baby pigeons? So I don't know why Phil asked that, but we'll. Well, we only got two questions emailed yeah, in this week, and, I, and I've been trying to find this one out for 30 years. So I'm hoping somebody will know the answer and email Phil at Addicted to Real Estate. So in, in the second segment, our main topic is formal education. It can make you a living, but self-education can make you a fortune. And we'll go over that. It's a great topic. Yeah, it's a great one. And also uh, later on, we're going to talk about deals of multiple exit strategies. I like it. I like it. So uh, stick around as we discuss these interesting topics and much, much more. Uh, You're listening to Addicts to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. 
Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 76 I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to the State Radio. So in this segment, we're going to talk about questions that were emailed in, and I came up with another one as well. So you're you're going to invent a question? I'm inventing a question. Are we allowed to do that? Is that against I, the rules? No, I think so. I don't okay. know. It depends I'm on whether it's it a first. difficult question it or not. So Phil had mentioned something about we're we're realtors, and the, and the fact of the matter is, some of our offices are realtor offices, and some are non-realtor offices. So three years ago, I didn't even know that there was a difference between a realtor and a real estate agent. And what, in fact, there is, Realtor is a brand. That it's is correct. A, it's a brand of real estate agent, just like Rollerblade. Everybody says Rollerblades, but really that's a brand of inline skate. It's a very good example. Kleenex tissue, same thing, right? So I don't, I don't know, man. You're losing me now. You got two analogies? Two analogies, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> so Stick to the real estate thing. We'll so you, can be a, you can be a real estate agent, but without being a member of the National Association of Realtors. And I, I actually... Our office um, at one point was a member. Now we have one office that's a member and one, and two that are not members. And what I find is that a lot of real estate investors don't necessarily uh, need that brand because they're not taking on clients. So we have a lot of investors that are in our office that they're in our office because they want to do their own deals, not because they're taking on clients. And even if they are taking on clients, you have to look at way out the pros and cons. What are the benefits and what are the um, the costs? And, you know, it's pricey. It's, what, $600? Well, it's actually a little bit less, but, but it less? It's, it's, it's right around $500. Yeah. But, you know, it is. It's it's like a union. Yeah. It, it really is. I mean, you know, they, they, go to, they go to bat for uh, the real estate agents. They go to bat for the real estate community in, in legislature. Ooh. And, uh, you know, and... I don't like lobbyists. Yeah, i, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, don't, I agree with you. I don't like lobbyists either. Um, not necessarily my reason for not being a, a realtor. But uh, but it is it's it's not the same thing and, and you're paying these dues um, you know it's like like a union you're paying these dues every year it's a, it's almost five hundred dollars a year and you're supporting these people and they give you some education they give you uh, you know somebody to complain to when you have a complaint but the reality is you don't need them to do those things you can do them you can do the education yourself and you can also and you can also complain <laughs> without them. You know, in fact, the MLS board, our MLS board, if you remember, Phil, we had to we had to put up extra money because we're not realtors because they have the same complaint system as the board of realtors does in in our county, in Bucks County. So so it was very easy for us to 
not be a realtor, but we have to live by the same rules and same ethics as a realtor, or we would be thrown out of our board, uh, or I'm sorry, our, our MLS yeah. system. Well, let's talk about how this affects uh, any real estate agents or realtors who are out there listening to this show. If you've cut that check for $500 every year, which usually comes at the end of the year, uh, that's a hard check to write when you're an agent, okay? It's, it's tough enough to make money in this business. We all work hard. And to just throw $500 into being a membership of a, of a, of a board of realtors is something that I've always uh, found to be a difficult check to write. Now, I've, I've written it for more than a decade, but now that I don't have to write it, I am perfectly fine with it. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you some of the reasons why. One of the reasons is I don't like being anything that I find so difficult to pronounce as the word realtor. <laughs> A lot of people call it's you realtors. Realtors. I mean, yeah, some people don't even pronounce it correctly. That's, that's right. right. Lots that's of right. people. That's right. Realtor. Right. Right. Realtor. Right. Realtor. Okay. Yeah. Realtor. 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 I've heard it pronounced. And it's like, how do you spell that? Oh, that's a whole nother thing. How do you spell whole okay. nother? That's funny. Okay. If I'm gonna go, <laughs> if I'm gonna go around calling myself something, at least I hope I can pronounce it properly. Real estate agent just rolls off the tongue. I'm fine with that. You know, you, you're not allowed to have a designation of an R on your card. Now, I haven't lost any business because of that, as far as I know. And the whole thing about the lobbyist, well, you know, you you might not appreciate a lobbyist function in life, and I wouldn't say I'm the biggest fan of them. However, you do not need to be a member of a board to contribute to a lobbyist. If you if you agree with what they are doing, you are free to uh, contribute to such an organization on your own behalf. Paying money so you can participate in our government protectionist racket. <laughs> yeah, and my, and my biggest my biggest complaint about the the because I, I honestly wouldn't mind contributing to the board, but the problem is then all my agents have to contribute to the board. You know, it's an office designation, not a personal designation. Personal person, yeah. And if I can make that choice, it's I like would a make that shop choice. or a non union shop. Right. I, I often tell people we're our, our location. We're a non union shop. Right. But we do have others. There's some people that see the benefits of it. You know, they get. These special fancy Nancy lock boxes, I guess, and they get. Oh, don't even get me started. Yeah. I was on the, the board to get them to have those things removed. Yeah, there, from I think the Bucks County systems. Associated. There's definitely better systems yeah, than absolutely. what they're using. Yeah. And then they also get the uh, access to like the the legal hotline. That was like one of the benefits that one of my friends says. Oh, I love that legal hotline. It's like, okay, well, I get it. That's fine. You, you know, I just go to you, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> and I just go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there was anything else I'd say about it is the Board of Realtors would uh, come after me as the owner of the office to do their collections for them, which I, I was really insulted by that. MLS does they were too. They were uh, yeah, MLS really a thorn yeah. in my side, emailing me and threatening me. Now, if I'm a, a member of their organization, I expect to be treated with a little more respect than – being threatened constantly every week that I better collect from Agent Joe Smith or they're going to shut my whole office down. And when you've had about 50 of those emails come your way, it's a very good reason to leave them in the dust. Well, it keeps your expenses down to hire each broker as their collection agent for all their agents. Oh, yeah. And then, and then if you and, and if they throw you out of the border, they don't refund the other agents either. Oh, wow. So you have, you know, you two or three of your agents don't, play, don't pay. You have the choice to pay. So the moral of this story is that you get to be a – Realtor, or you could be a real estate agent without being a realtor. And right. a real, by being a real estate agent just means you have a license to practice real estate. And, of course, our agent has, our office has both. So if you want to become a real estate agent or a realtor, call me, 215-378-9190, and I'll let you make the choice. All right, so let's go on to the next question. Invoicing tenants. Now, Phil, Phil this is um, something I had never considered before, but tell, tell us the magic behind this. Well, it uh, it occurred to me about uh, 15 years ago, in my own personal life, most everybody invoices me, but there would be a few people who wouldn't. There's There would be a few people, I don't even remember what they were, um, homeowner associations send you out like a payment book, and they leave it up to you to rip off the statement each month and put it in an envelope and address it, that kind of a thing. There were There were a few people in my life personally that would – would just expect you to pay them on the first of every month, for example. And I thought to myself, well, if I'm struggling, and I'm a pretty uh, organized guy, if I am struggling to remember to pay those bills, then my tenants are probably struggling to remember to pay the bills as well. 
and everyone else is sending them invoices, second invoices with late fees and things of that nature. And, and if I'm the guy that doesn't even have the first invoice there, well, I'm probably going to get paid last. So I decided to start invoicing my tenants. And I, I definitely think it was a very good decision. I'm reminding them every single month exactly what they owe me, exactly when it's due, how to get in touch with me if there's a problem, because my phone number's on there, my website's on there. I'm also reminding them of all kinds of other things that are beneficial to my business, such as I accept credit cards, and you can go to this website and pay me. If you don't have the money, you can always put uh, a month's rent on a credit card. I also use the invoices as a communication method. Sometimes it's best to just write somebody a sentence or two uh, saying, hey, your water bill was really high this month. Do you have a toilet leak? It's a lot easier to just uh, throw a sentence on an invoice and send it off to the tenants, where if I picked up the phone to call them, I might end up uh, wasting my time, for example, being on the call for 15, 20 minutes, and they might find half a dozen other things that they'd like me to complain about or that they'd like me to fix while I was on that phone call, I'd rather not get into that conversation if I don't have to. If they have legitimate things that need to be fixed, I'm certainly willing to hear them, but I don't want to be calling them up soliciting additional work to do. Um, I've got plenty of that to do by my regular business. What about upsells? Could you uh, maybe put a little two-line item on there saying winter's coming up? Would you like to go down to Sarasota, Florida for a vacation? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I got a copy of an invoice that a uh, new lawn guy in Florida sent me, and I got to show it to you because his whole invoice is upselling. He mentions he's in B&I. He mentions that he's at the number one rated beach in the United States, the Esther Key. He mentions that he's, because he's in B&I, he's making himself available to do referrals for people. So if you need mm -hmm. referrals, he'll give it to you. He also has um, a thing on there where he's requesting – uh, that you like him on Facebook, and then another one where he's offering you a $5 credit towards your next bill if you go onto Yelp and create a positive review for him. The whole invoice is, is mostly a marketing thing for himself. He's got a QR code on there. I've got to show it to you. It's really well thought out, really well That's thought really out. Neat. For a landscaper, yeah, it seems pretty. Yeah. Yeah, so I, pretty so just out. real quick to, to close this conversation, I do not invoice my tenants, and I never have. And I find it interesting that you're such a proponent of it. Uh, I do find your ideas interesting. I also don't know if I want to take that kind of time to send an invoice every month. You know well, what I used to do that I that I didn't was I, that that's different than both of what, of what you did. When I first started in the rental business, I did ACH, where I actually just had them fill out a copy, an authorization to have me pull it directly from the bank account, and on the first of every month, it just got pulled. So that's another an well, alternative. I don't it's, know about you, but a lot of my tenants have to pay other things besides the rent. They they have to pay the water bill, and I typically have to do a mathematical calculation and give them a copy of that water bill. If it's a duplex, for example, I have to split it up on a per-person basis. So that kind of thing uh, requires a special price invoice each month. So that would be a good reason why you'd want to invoice people. And if you already have QuickBooks, for example – and you're, you have to go into QuickBooks to receive the payment anyway, so it's really just the 30 seconds of work and a cost of a stamp to create the invoice. It's a pretty easy process. Yeah, I may have to look into that with you. If you'd like to see a, a copy of our invoices, just send us a check to... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Excellent. So. Yeah, maybe that wouldn't be a bad idea to bring up in one of our, 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 one of our meetings. monthly meetings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so next question. Why are you guys investing in Florida? Well... I, I, for me, I would say one of the one of the reasons that we decided on Florida is because the market dropped tremendously down there when we started buying, and um, I say when the market went south, so did we, right? And and the other reason is um, a little bit of lifestyle. And that's certainly one of the reasons that Phil mentioned to me. It'd be nice to have a place that we could actually go use every now and again. And um, I think from a from a tax perspective, the IRS says you can only use a place like two weeks out of the whole year to be able to take all the uh, the write-offs and whatnot. So um, so if you want to go more than two weeks, then you have to buy multiple places in Florida. So we, we pretty much have it. Can we stay down there yet all year round? We just have to jump from property to property? We still got to buy a couple more. I haven't really considered it yet. <laughs> well, I'll tell you some of the reasons that made, made us go down to Florida in the first place. Um, 
three out of the top ten cities in the United States that were classified on a list of the worst hit real estate markets in the United States were in Florida. The three were in uh, Miami, Cape Coral, and Sarasota. Miami just didn't fit my lifestyle right now. I'm, I'm a 50-year-old family man, and I probably would be much better off in Miami if I was uh, young and single. That'd be the town I'd want to invest in. Uh, Cape Coral just had nothing to excite me. But when I went to Sarasota, I fell in love with the place. So think about this. You know, when we started buying in Florida, we bought in one of the top 10 worst hit markets in the United States. Then I found another list that I found really interesting. There was a list at the same time I found, which was the top 10 cities that people are moving to. And Sarasota was also on that list. And I went back and I cross-referenced both lists. And I tried to find how many cities were on both lists. And the only other city that was on both lists was Las Vegas. I, I love Las Vegas. I'm a poker player. I, I, I've been out there many times. I've been married out there. All kinds of crazy stuff has happened to me out in Vegas. Um, I could do a whole radio segment on the stuff that's happened to me in Vegas. But the point I th- to this... I thought I was supposed to stay in Vegas. <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever happens. I'll, I'll keep the things I want to stay in Vegas. I'll keep them there. I'll keep them out of my story. Here's the biggest reason to invest in Florida. Okay, The largest boom of humans being born in the United States started in 1946, right after World War II, and continued for a period of approximately 20 years. Of course, I'm talking about baby boomers. It it depends on what list you look at. Baby boomers are typically speaking people who were born between 1946 and 1966. I've seen other lists that had it ending in 1964, whatever, okay, 18 to 20 years of of people being born. So guess what age those people are right now? They are 70 years old. And if you're 70 years old, okay, you could very well be thinking of moving to where? Florida. So by buying a bunch of properties in a place where the largest group of people ever being born are just beginning to hit retirement, just beginning to hit retirement, which means that the amount of people moving to Florida should only increase from now for the next 18 years is potentially possible, which, which is very exciting to me, especially if, you know, all these people living on the East Coast, where do they go? They go to Florida, and, and that is the main reason that we started investing in Florida. It's a supply and demand issue. There's only so many houses that are near the, near the beach, and... People want to be there, and the more more demographics that, you know, as the baby boomers come of age, they're going to want to be near the beach mm-hmm. when they retire. Well, if our if our estimation that boomers are going to help the real estate market, we're going to know we're going to know that by say the year 2025. So make sure that you tune into this show on Thursday at three o'clock in 2025, and we will answer that question. So if you stick around, we're going to come back. We're going to discuss. Formal education will make you a living, and self-education will make you a fortune. You are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name's Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number 2. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number 2.com. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. 
I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 Hi, I'm Larry Steinesser, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for four ninety five a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I am Larry Steinhaus, and you can listen to all three of us, Larry Steinhaus, Jeremy Ricci, and Phil Falcone, every week, every, I'm sorry, every Thursday. We should be every weekday with the amount of knowledge we have, but every Thursday between 3 and 4 right here on WWDB. So, Jeremy, we, had, we, uh, we came in before and we were talking about exit strategies, which is a very important thing when anyone invests in real estate. So why don't you tell me a little bit about more about what, we, what, yeah, what some of your exit strategies have been. So part of what when – the, when, the when the market went south and the downturn came – um, I didn't get hurt, and one of the reasons I didn't get hurt was because I was a buy-and-hold investor and not a fix-and-flipper. Um, and even as a fix-and-flipper, I did do some fix-and-flips, but I did them in the first-time home buyer market. So if you were doing McMansions, $500,000, $400,000 houses, that's great as long as there's somebody there to buy it from you when it's all fixed up and, and finished. If, if there's not somebody there to buy it from you, um, at, then you're stuck with it. And if you can't sell a $400,000 house, what do you do with it? Well, you can try to rent it. In California, those make great rentals. In the, in the Philadelphia area where, where, where I'm investing in the suburbs, you, it's tough to rent a $400,000 house and make any money. You're losing money. So how many of those can you buy if you're losing money on each and every one of them, right? Some, some amount, but it's limited. So by buying, for me, sticking in the first-time home buyer market allows me the option of reselling a house after I bought it it gives me an option of doing uh, a rental where I can just rent it and have the tenants pay the mortgage for me. And the third option is kind of a hybrid of the two that I like to do is a rent-to-own where somebody uh, gives me a non-refundable down money and it applies towards the purchase price. And they rent it, and a lot of times I can get them to rent it for a little bit more than a regular rental and apply that towards the purchase as well and give them a couple, three years to get qualified for a mortgage, refinance it, and get a nice little kicker on the back end um, the other benefit is you're, you're, as long as you do that for a year or more, you're into long-term capital gains versus short-term capital gains, which for the flippers out there, they understand what I, when I say short-term capital gains, that should have, that should, they should feel that pain on their, on their uh, hip national bank, on their pocket. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes I look for three different exit strategies. And my, my favorite one is a long-term exit strategy where I'm going to hold the property for five to seven years and then sell it for a really nice profit. I'm looking in five to seven years, I'm looking for 80 to 100% profit is my, is my long-term strategy. But, but things happen, you know, or, or maybe I'll be doing a flip and, you know, just like you're saying, I'll, I'll be doing a flip where, you know, I'm paying a hundred thousand for it, putting 50 into it and knowing I could sell it for two or two twenty. But all of a sudden, you know, the 50 turns into 80 and you make a mistake or, or it stays on the market a little bit longer. And, you know, you, your profit, you know, where I was looking for maybe 50,000 profit is maybe 20 or 10, or maybe I actually lost money on this one. 
So I'm looking for something to make sure that either, if, even if I lose money, it's so small that it's okay with me, or I can rent it, as you said. And I think I think the better option is to rent it and wait for the market to even bring it bring it up higher. Do you, you ever ask a flipper about rental property? And they say, yeah, I have a rental property. It's a flip that didn't flip. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Well said. Yeah, well, exactly. Well said. So you have to make sure that if you have flips that don't flip, that they do make sense as rental properties. Now, if you're getting something you know, phenomenally under market value, and um, I've, I've actually – one of the extra strategies that I've had is I had a house that didn't sell. Um, I moved into it. <laughs> just did the and, same thing. I moved into one. I moved into one I couldn't rent. <laughs> yeah. So I moved into it, and then I sold the one that I was living in, and I did that a few times, and that and that was, um, you know, sometimes it's hey, why not? Somebody's got to pay sure. the mortgage. Might as well be me, and then I'll sell the one that I'm living in now. And if you sell the house you're living in, you live in a, two of the last five years, you you qualify for a, a 121 exclusion. I'm not a tax guy, but you can ask your tax guy all about Code Section 121. And um, I'm a tax geek, but I'm not an accountant. Yeah, so, right. so um, you know, live in your house two of the last five years, you can sell it and, and have those taxes paid by an exclusion. That's a pretty cool thing. So that's another exit strategy. You know, buy it, move into it, sure. live there two years and sell it and get all those capital gains tax tax uh, paid. You know, it's funny. Some of the hard, the hard money lenders, you, you talk to them, and, and they part of their criteria to lend you money as a hard money lender in a flip is can they rent it? And make their money back if they have to take the property from you. So even those people are realizing that they mu- they must have an exit strategy to lend you money. So exit strategy is very important. Yeah, yeah I mean, when- commercial too. I mean, commercial exit strategies. If you have a, a place, I mean, there's so many. You know, you see all these vacant single use buildings, and all of a sudden, like a church. How many vacant churches do you see now? And and they say for sale in front of them. What are they going to do with those? I mean. What do you do How with that one with a cemetery next to it? Oh. Yeah, I actually called about it oh. for sale by owner. It was a church with a cemetery yeah, next to it. I think I know which one. Yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. There's a guy in uh, Warminster who took a church and turned it into a medical office building. So and there you go. Really gutsy move. Really. I talked to him before he rented it, and he was he was pretty nervous. Especially it has a cemetery next to it because <laughs> all those people have this foreshadowing. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, when I buy a house, okay, like, let's talk about Florida, for example. Let me give you an example. I buy a house down there. I can wholesale it, meaning that I take the contract and I sell it to somebody else and I make some money. Or I could do something I love to do, which is called wholesale to yourself, which basically means I go out to a private lender and I borrow a little bit more than I needed to buy the house, and that extra money goes in my pocket. And now another thing I could do with it is I could flip the house. Another thing I could do with it is rent it out to a tenant annually. Another thing I could do with it is in Florida is rent it out as a vacation rental, quite a lucrative uh, strategy. Now, exit strategy, okay, you could you could say exit strategy means you're exiting the ownership of the prof- property, but I, I view exit strategy more in a broader term where what am I going to do with the property? It doesn't mean I've gotten rid of it. It means I still own it, but what am I going to do with it? And, and that's the real thing. I love having multiple exit strategies. Another thing you can do with a property is rent to own getting paid a lump sum of money from somebody who has money to put down, but they just can't get a mortgage right now. And there's a whole lot of people out there in that scenario. And another thing you could do with it is sell it. So right there is is seven different options. And I'd love to buy a house if it has all seven of these options, meaning that I could wholesale it, I could flip it, I could wholesale it to yourself it, I could rent it annually, I could rent it as a vacation rental, I can rent it as a rent-to-own, or I can just flat-out sell it. That gives me seven different ways to handle that property. I'll give you two more, two more that you missed. And in the multi-unit properties that we have in Florida, especially in the vacation rentals, you see this at the Jersey Shore a lot. Remember, people were taking duplexes at the Jersey Shore, and they would condo them. So you could take it and subdivide it. You can take a a multi-unit property, condo it, um, and, and sell them off separately or hang on to them and have them as separate separately deeded units. Another way to even further subdivide a property would be to timeshare it. And instead of selling the house, you could sell off a week's use at that house. So that's another thing that we looked into that the numbers are just staggering of what you can do with timeshares. Amazing how much money you can make with timeshares. So I really do want to learn learn more about that. I have a a guy who was um, at my gym today that I was talking to, and he is talking about a pretty neat concept here in Philadelphia where he wants to do micro apartments 
take row homes, condo them into four separate mini apartments within the size of, let's say, one row home wow. and have these little 400-square-foot apartments that are condos. And they say he's, they're doing it up in Manhattan. They're doing it up in New York all the time around the more expensive areas of the city where the people are looking to have um, – you know, near the near the universities and whatnot, I, I can see that as as working out pretty well, as long as you can get it through zoning and all that jazz. But by taking, you know, what does a builder do? They buy land by the acre and then they sell it by the parcel. So the the more you can dice up something, take the executive executech suites, uh, Phil's office building. Uh, if you're looking for an office space, it's a great space. How do, how does that make sense? He takes a huge building. A lot of how, how many square foot feet do you have there? Eleven thousand, something like that. Thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand square feet. You dice it up into little, small, manageable offices, and now those can rent for a lot more premium than a price per square foot if they were just looking at, you know, renting uh, a standalone office. Well, that mini condo idea, that's a neat idea. Um, I've never heard of that. But one of the reasons that I, you know, obviously you could rent rooms in Philadelphia, but you can't do it legally. And that's why I don't talk about that on the radio as a, as a strategy that I recommend to people. I know plenty of people who are doing it. I even know one guru who's out there bragging about doing it. Oh, like rooming house? Yeah, yeah. but sure, house, yeah. sure, sure. You can, you can, there's certain you can get zoned for a boarding house. You can get a special exception for sure, it. Sure, you can. I'm merely saying that there's maneuvering, most, yeah. My guess would be that most of them that are actually doing that today are doing it illegally, right? Yeah. And they, and they probably don't even know. That's oh, the I think they know. Oh, they do. I think okay. they know. Okay. I yeah. think they know. So, yeah. so one of the things we're talking about is renting rooms, and this guy was essentially talking about selling the rooms. Literally That's selling great. a room. Yeah. Well, maybe a room with a kitchen, you know, whatever. That's great. Yeah. That's so interesting. It's an interesting idea. Yeah, it's very interesting. Mini condos. Never heard of it. Mini apo- yeah, I think it, I think it would have so much government involvement that you'd have a very difficult time getting that concept approved. Yeah, you know, we love government interference, right? <laughs> and then, of course, I want to be 70 to 80 percent uh, debt as maximum in, in my units only because I want to be able to fire sale them. And get out and not have to as worry an about strategy. it. Yeah, yeah, as an exit strategy. So that's just something else to add to, add to the list. You know, another another exit Fire strategy. Fire sale as opposed to selling it? I was just saying you want to be able to get out right. if you needed to. Yeah. Right. right. I, I use the term fire sale, but yes, you're right. I just want to be able to be able to sell it. Now, here, here's another exit strategy that I, I hear a lot of people doing. If you want to ha- own 20 houses free and clear, a lot of people advocate buy 40 houses. Once you have the 40, then take the equity, sell off 20 of the worst ones, and keep, try to keep 20 of the best ones. And... You know, you have the equity in your properties. You you buy twice as many as you need. You sell off half and pay off the other half, and then you get some free, a bunch of free and clears. Yeah, that's what that's our friend neat, in Florida did. Yeah, it's an elite yeah. strategy. Well, that's the the beauty of this business is you're really playing monopoly for a living. And if you if you're smart enough to stick around in it a long time, if you're really smart enough to get started when you're young, well, you're going to have options when you get to hit seventy that. You won't have to wait that long to move to Florida. Yeah, you might decide how many houses you want to retire to, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> if you, my, if you my, use real estate as a wealth building tool. My son is uh, finishing high school in four months, and he's decided to come and work with me and not go to college. And and I just think about the advantages that he's going to have over all three of us. Figure starting in the business at 18 years old, starting full time, having guys like us to help him. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what he does with that. My one mentor, Pete Fortunato, used to say, before I was in real estate, I was in high school. <laughs> and he actually never had a job except for became a real estate yeah. agent. You know? we gotta go. We got to go see him, man. We got to go. He's, got, he's we, having a meeting in April. We should go down. We, yeah. we, we should go down. I mean, it, it, it's tough to sit there for two days, but I'd love to sit there for one day. Okay, so um, that really covers, you know, deals with multiple exit strategies. The point to this business is if you're going to invest in a piece of property – You want to really think about what it is that you're going to do with it. Don't just have one concept like flipping it. That's just one way out of many ways. You need to learn all of these other ways so that you can be more efficient with uh, renting this property or selling this property. And the bottom line is you got to make sure that you're profiting from it in one way or another. What's your plan B? What's your fail-safe? What happens if the first extra strategy doesn't work? What now? Right, and if you'd like to learn more about these strategies, you've got to come out to our real estate meetings. Our next one is on March 16th at the uh, Mike's York Street Bar and Grill. We rent out the whole second floor. If you don't know where Mike's is, it's right at the corner of York and Street Road in Warminster. And uh, all you have to do is show up to that place at 7 o'clock at night on March 16th. Go to the second floor Cost twenty dollars to enter our meetings. 
And this month, we're going to be talking about how to get rich using commercial real estate. Now, when we come back, we are going to be talking about formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. All right? You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215 942 I'm Phil Falcone from Executex Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executex Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the internet. You get two full time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms, you get the mailboxes, you get the printer, the copy, the scanner, you get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And on this segment, we're going to talk about a formal education, how it might make you a living, but it's self-education will make you a fortune. Now, the one question that we didn't cover in the first segment, and everybody wants to know the answer to, is why you never see baby pigeons. (laughs) Now, Phil, I have no idea how you would answer this question. All I do know is that what's the Pennsylvania state bird? Is it like the ruffled grouse or something like that? If Philadelphia had a city bird... It would would definitely be the the pigeon. pigeon, Absolutely. It would definitely be the pigeon. Well, I can't answer the question. I'm the one who asked the question. Okay. I went to college down in Kensington near the – right near the L, and there were pigeons everywhere. And one day it occurred to me, how come you never see a baby pigeon? Now, this was in the year 1985, and I'm still trying to answer this question. So I certainly can't answer it. All I can tell you is – I don't believe I've ever seen one. Now, I don't think pigeons go from conception to full size. Where are they? If you've seen a baby pigeon out there, please email me at philadictedrealestate.com. I'd like to know what's up with these things. Especially being that they're the city bird of, of Philadelphia. You know, I did have a tenant once that had a pet pigeon. No joke. Uh- I have a friend that, that does carrier pigeons, and he ha- he raises them. He sends them out 10 miles, 12 miles, however far they go, and he goes home, and they're there when he gets home. Well, what it's happened amazing. with the tenant with the pet pigeon? Well, when and, and <laughs> when she moved out, the pigeon stayed. Really? Yeah. No. I had a tenant who parked his motorcycle inside the apartment. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah. There was oh, this no. gigantic oil stain oh, right no. in the middle of the living room. How long did it take to get the gas smell out of the apartment? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I just paid somebody to do it. Okay. Well, we need we need to talk about education now, Phil. I think you know. I think the baby pigeon topic has to be closed. So where would you? I, so where would you learn? So back in 1985, what didn't they have that they have now that might be a good resource for this kind of thing? The back internet. In, Google. Yeah, right. <laughs> the internet. Right. You know, you can look it up online. Look it up. You know, and that that segues us right into this. Is that there's so much education available that you can self educate these days. That used to be there's only formal places where you can go get. If you want to learn real estate investing, where do you go? I mean, I know maybe Temple has a, a real estate school that they teach investing. I know there's a real estate school. In fact, uh, one of the local organizations has it in their charter that if they ever dissolve, the money gets donated to Temple Real Estate School. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so, the, you know, I guess there's places. Wharton Business School, maybe you can learn a little bit. But I, I tell you, um, real estate is, is not that difficult to learn. And if you look on YouTube, I mean, Phil, aside from the YouTube channel, there's tons of free resources out there. There's some resources you don't have to pay very much for, like going to one of our meetings for 20 bucks. I mean, geez, that's pretty cheap education. And um, or you can or you can listen to um, you know these uh, these radio ads that have you pay twenty, thirty, sixty thousand dollars to attend their class. <laughs> it's like yeah, well, I certainly <laughs> I certainly don't recommend that anyone does that because. Uh, those those things. It's a shame what they do to people. So many people come to our meetings later on and they say, I wish I would have met you guys before I went to so and so seminar. When someone tries to separate thirty thousand dollars from you to learn the real estate business, that's when you know you gotta come to Addicted to Real Estate's meetings. We charge twenty dollars. We're gonna they charge them for thirty thousand. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, you know, we're we're the real deal. We do this for a living, and there's lots of ways that we can make money together without having to take your life savings from you. And one of those ways is by partnering with people. If you come to our meetings, we get to know you. We get to know you personally. After a while, we become friends. We feel comfortable with you. You feel comfortable with us. And then maybe you find a deal, and we'll fund your deal. Or we find a deal, and you'll fund our deal. Or who knows how we can help each other. The ways are endless. We don't have enough time on this segment to even talk about it. But the ways are endless. Let's talk about the education. It, it really irks me that when, let's just take high school curriculum, for example. The, every single thing that they teach you is directed towards one concept, and that one concept is going to college. And I'm not knocking that at all. If you want to go to college, terrific. But every single class is about going to college and then becoming, you know, becoming an employee at some company. Well, what if you have entrepreneurial desires? What if you have entrepreneurial skills? What if you have business skills? What if you're a great salesman? There's so many other wonderful things that you can do in this world, and in most high school curriculums don't teach you anything like that. Now, they do have trade schools, trade schools, but they require most trade schools where, where I live – require that the student make up their mind if they want to go to the trade school 50% of the time, and they have to make that decision by the time they enter the, the sophomore year of high school. And I say that's just way too young, way too young, all right, to make such a critical decision about what you're going to do with your life. Um, do they have adult tech schools? Could you go to, like, the Bucks Tech School or Monco Tech sure School? Sure they will, but where are you going to – what is the thing that most people invest in – when we're talking about self-education, it's it's typically the stock market and the real estate market. Those are your two biggest categories. Wouldn't you agree? For investment, you're saying? For investment. Yeah, or businesses if they want to be entrepreneurial. Okay, or business. businesses. Yeah, Let's they, call it three. But I'll all, buy all three of those, you're right, there's no education anywhere. Yeah, where do they teach you in school how to yeah. invest in the stock market? And, they don't teach that either. Never? Or, or they throw in one class in your maybe in your senior year after you've been going to school for 12 years. It's ridiculous. Right. I'll tell you what. When I was in seventh grade, I did. I was in a different. I was in a different program. We were in the um, the Penn program, but they had a mock stock investing where we had to. We that's were great. allocated right. like thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's tremendous. And and we had to, you know, virtually, uh, quote unquote, bet that money in the stock market and see how we all came out. But that was in. It was in a, a little bit of an advanced curriculum in this in the school, and that was in seventh grade. But they don't do that in all schools. I mean, surely the you know, they call them public. I call them government schools. I, don't, I refuse to call them public schools. I say government schools. Okay. Government schools. They teach you how. To, a lot of times, they teach you how to how to get a job, but they don't teach you how to create jobs. Oh, they don't teach you how to get a yeah. job. 
Not, no, you're right. Not how to get Absolutely a job. Not. But they teach you a skill set that might go along with a job. No, well, they, te- they teach you the minimum skill sets to get along in life. Math, math, English. How about balancing a checkbook? I didn't. No, they don't teach, teach that. that. They need to teach that. Absolutely. Thing, right? Well, to me, when I when I read this sentence, a formal education will make you a living. Self education will make you a fortune. I'll tell you what it means to me. Formal education means that somebody else is dictating to me what it is that I should learn about. Right? Where self education, I am the one dictating what it is I want to learn about. Huge difference. Huge difference. Okay. Quick story, I'm up to Poconos, and I'm skiing with my friend Tom Farris. And he says, my buddy's got a house around here. Let's go to the house. As soon as we go there, walk into this house, there's about four kids there. And out of the four kids, they were all like maybe ages uh, 10 to 13. And three of the kids ignored me like most kids ignore a 50-year-old guy. One of the kids came up to me and went, hey, dude, what's up? And like shook my hand, okay? He had a big smile on his face. Anyway... A few minutes later, the kid's shooting pool, and he messed with me a little bit. He, you know, he was messing around. I was in the way of his pool stick, and he's like, come on, man, get out of my way, that kind of thing. The kid had a lot of personality. He had panache. I noticed the kid. I liked the kid. He's going to okay? be a salesman, right? So a few minutes later, I'm sitting at a bar, and one the, of the fathers. The no, the house had a bar. There were three men. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. There were three men at this house, and one of them was complaining about the fact that his kid is really struggling in school. And the class that the kid was struggling in was algebra, okay? Now, when I was in high school, I raised my hand and I said, excuse me, sir, but why do we have to learn this stuff? And he said, I'll tell you why, Falcone, so you can help your kid with his algebra homework. <laughs> right? Oh, that's great. Right? That's and like, look, I've got a degree. I use algebra. That's okay, great. well, I've got a degree in engineering, and I've barely ever used it, all right? So the point of my story was, so I started telling the guy, that you use maybe, algebra, you just don't know it. Okay, I told the guy that maybe his kid needs to be something else. Maybe he's an entrepreneur. Maybe he's a businessman. Maybe he's a salesman. And then later on that evening, I learned that the kid who had said hello to me was the kid he was referring oh. to. I'll tell you right now, I'd hire that kid in a minute because that kid had skills. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely agreed. I, I sit there and I think about the other thing too, is which is ridiculous, these student loans. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've got a client right now, a 26-year-old male client who's got a good business. You know, he works for a good company, and he doesn't make enough money to buy a house because his student loans are $1,200 a month. This is ridiculous. I mean, you talk about $33,000 for a real estate course? Let me tell you something really interesting. Donald Trump at the last uh, Republican debate said that the only business that the government's involved in that actually makes a profit is student loans. Yeah, that says a lot. That's that's a huge statement. Yeah, that says a lot. It's talk- the only profitable thing that the government's involved in. And the in. reason the colleges are so expensive is because the government's giving student loans. But this is a whole other radio show. This yeah. isn't this isn't addicted to radio, the, real estate. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is why I hate college loans show. So when we talk about self education, will make you a fortune. I mean, I learned about this business from meetings, from other real estate investors, from books, from YouTube which is, is a tremendous resource that I didn't have when, in 1989 when I first got into this business. You can learn how to do surgery on yourself on YouTube. You probably <laughs> no, could. I, 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 don't, I don't recommend that. Okay. Yeah. No, but you, you, you can. I mean, the, when, I first started, when I first started in, in the business, it was uh, October 2001 is when I first started going to real estate meetings. November 2001, I went to Ohio for some mega conference, and there was all these speakers all over the place, and I actually whipped out my credit card, and I bought $10,000 worth of books and tapes. Now, it wasn't just from one guy, like one of these things that comes into town. Mm-hmm. And does. I actually bought probably 12 different speakers' products, and all those 12 speakers' products totaled 10000 bucks. Some of them said, you know, we don't have any more. We sold out. So that's all right. <laughs> just ship it to me. I don't want to carry this stuff home. So um, I, took off two weeks, I took off two weeks of my job in order to learn the real estate books, and the reason, it was, like Phil was saying, it's self-directed education. I was doing a self-directed education plan. I only bought from the speakers that I felt like I could learn something from and I felt that I had an interest in. And there were speakers that were there that I didn't buy their stuff from because I didn't really like their philosophy on things. I'd love to so, know what your wife said when you came home that weekend. Well, I wasn't married at the time. So I took two weeks off of school to learn those books. I did put $10,000 on my credit card. But then when I left my job, April Fool's Day, 2012, or I'm sorry, 2002, um, I ended up closing my first deal April fifteenth, two thousand two. So fifteen grand I made. 
15 grand in 15 days. And I made back all the money from all those books and tapes. I still like to know what your wife said when you came home and said you spent ten thousand dollars. She, uh, he, he, he wasn't married. She, yeah, I wasn't married, is what I said. <laughs> so yeah, but, but well, he I'm was sure, still dating. I'm her. sure most of our most of you our. You don't got to be married with a woman for her to yell at you for spending too much money. I'm sure most of our wives would be upset. But you guys have you guys have a buy a briefcase, and it's what's it two thousand dollars? Yeah, for we, the whole kit. Well, we actually we we, we preach owner financing. It's mean, ridiculous. So we owner finance it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. For you 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 sell that thing ridiculously cheap, and I bet you it gives you more information than the than the information that you were giving that you bought for ten thousand dollars. We have a, a thirteen DVD series that also it talks about all the different types of creative acquisition that we do, and we we were selling it for two thousand dollars, but we found it's much more digestible for people if they just pay us two hundred dollars a month. So we give them the whole thing up front. Yeah. And well, if you want to learn how to buy houses with none of your own money, the buyer's briefcase is an excellent thing to check out. You can check it out at addictedtorealestate.com. Uh, you know, one more thing about um, self-education. A great way for people out there to self-educate is to go to school to get your real estate license. And at Addicted to Real Estate, we will even pay for your license. That's right. You did hear me correctly. We will pay for your license. If you go to school to be an agent, give us a call, 267-988-2000, and let Addicted to Real Estate pay for your real estate school, and you could go there for free. So we got a couple of minutes left. I want to tell you a few things. Uh, if you want to be a sponsor of this show or if you want to be a guest on this show, give us a call, 267-988-2000. We'd love to talk to you. I also want to remind you that our next meeting is coming up on March 16th. And that's going to be at the Mike's York Street Pub in Warminster, PA at 7 o'clock. If you go to addictedtorealestate.com and you put your name and email address in on the front page, I will personally send you an invitation to the seminars and the meetings that we do. And sooner or later, we're going to come to your area. But if you want to come to Warminster, we'd love to have you. And make sure you listen in to our show every Thursday at 3. That's Thursdays at 3 on WWDB. A little, uh, little rhyming there. Thursdays at 3 at WWDB or... Another great way to get our show is Phil puts out the show on podcasts on YouTube. So you could actually go to addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address, and you'll get notifications of the of the audio uh, audio video from the show that, that gets blasted out there on, on YouTube. And if you look at this uh, this most recent show, you'll see Larry's new car wrap. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, as, as always, I'm paying, and as Phil just mentioned, I'm paying for your real estate license. Give me a call, 215-378-9190, and I will pay for you to get your real estate license. Thanks for listening. Talk to you guys next week. To say you got to know somebody or know somebody to give somewhere these days. To say you know that's all right. To say you got to know somebody or know somebody to give somewhere. Good afternoon. Get ready for Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co host Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhouse here on WWDB 860 AM every Thursday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. If you want to ask us a question or if you have a real estate need, give us a call, 267-988-2000. You're probably wondering, who is addicted to real estate? We're full-time real estate investors and realtors. Okay, we buy houses. If you've got one that you're looking to sell, give us a call. If you're a realtor and you would like to hang your license at our agencies, we have three of them. One in Montgomeryville, one in Hatboro, and one in Huntington Valley. 